<laughs> okay, guys, we are here with uh, Sifu Mauro Antonino D'Angelo, or MAD Mad, as you probably know him uh, from his uh, system. I'm very excited to sit down and talk to him because if you've seen any of his uh, videos, you know that he's a very high skilled practitioner and um, it's very lovely to see that more and more people are getting interested in the the internal aspect of martial arts just as much as the external uh, Sifu Mauro how are you today uh, I'm fine uh, hi everybody I thank you for the invitation it's awesome having you um, tell us a bit about yourself um, how how did you start your martial arts journey what age and uh, what what inspired you to do so? Because you look like a person who's been doing it for a lifetime. Yes, actually it's like that. Because I started when I was uh, 10 years old in, uh, in Rome, in Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually I start not because I was a great fan of uh, Bruce Lee or, or martial arts in general. But my journey in martial arts started because I lost my father when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother decided to bring me to one place to help me to improve my self-confidence and uh, at the same time to try to release some of the, the tensions that uh, I, at that time I had inside because of the, the, the event. Mm. So because of that, I started uh, doing martial arts in one very small uh, uh, school nearby my house. And uh, at that time we, are, we were only kids. The teacher uh, used to teach only to kids because he believed that if you want to really learn martial arts, you have to start from the from a you're uh, kid. Uh, you are very yeah, you are a kid, very really, really young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't agree with that, but I can say that for me it was a very helpful experience, and also because uh, that teacher at that time uh, uh, used to invite other masters to his school, so we had a lot of experience in uh, other martial arts because uh, officially the school was uh, mainly about uh, Tai Chi Chuan and Shaolin. Shaolin Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that Tai Chi was a quite, uh, we can say, like a modern version of uh, Tai Chi Chuan because uh, when I was a kid, I was studying the, the 24 uh, uh, modern movement sequence. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, Shaolin. So it was a quite uh, stressful experience because you can imagine like uh, 10 years ago, old kids yeah. uh, practicing one hour of Tai Chi and then over a the sudden you start doing Shaolin jumping all around of the gym. So it was quite <laughs> a sort of a contradiction. No? We, can, we can explain in terms of uh, yin yang if we mm -hmm. want, mm -hmm. but it was a very nice experience. And uh, he helped us because uh, from the beginning he teaches us how to keep our minds open. And uh, that's why he used to invite other masters from Aikido, from Karate, from uh, mm. Jiu-Jitsu and uh, other styles because, uh, yeah. That's actually very wise. You know, most people are tempted to say, you know, well, we're the only martial arts style that you need, you ever need to learn, which of course is not true. You know, we, you, you yes. can learn from everyone, actually. I love that. Yes, of course. Of course. That's my same experience. And... Uh, mm -hmm. And, and after uh, maybe five, six years, I moved to another school because the teacher decided to close the school and he moved back to, to the States. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, I moved to another school that uh, actually now is uh, my, my association in, uh, in Italy because then I become one of the, the, uh, the referent of the, the school. And uh, in that school is also very interesting because there were four different teachers related to different styles. Mm, interesting. That, and uh, we have uh, like Wing Chun style, Tai Chi, Yang style, uh, Ta Lang Chuan, and uh, Hong Chuan, Hong Gar style. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they, they, at that time they cooperate together and then uh, we all have experience in all the systems. And uh, after uh, maybe three, four years, you can decide to specialize in one. Mm -hmm. And at that time I decided to specialize in, uh, in Wing Chun. Oh, really? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, actually, from the beginning, I have a quite, uh, uh, how to say, um, to say, open experience. Like, not, I was not close from the beginning, one style, believing yes. that, ah, yes, my style is the best, we are the best. But from the beginning, I always had a mindset thinking about how can I, can I find good things in others, mm. in other systems, in other things that can help me. I love so, that. So, uh, what, what made you choose or specialize in Wing Chun? Uh, because in the beginning I studied a lot of Taolu and forms and movement. Mm -hmm. At that time, Wing Chun gave me the, the feeling that, okay, this is a, sounds more practical, I can learn more about fighting. 
Uh, even though nowadays it, I know that it's not like that because all the styles are complete in some way. Mm -hmm. But at that time, yeah, I was quite bored to study in many taolus because, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, four forms taolu. So I started doing a, a Wing Chun also because that the teacher I had at that time was a very good heart, mm -hmm. a very good man. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I, I think that for me, he is the, the a kind of inspiration for my martial path. And then uh, in my mind, he is one example how one master should be, one teacher should be. I love that. Because, I love that. Yeah. What do you feel m made him stand apart like, uh, or stand out in your eyes? Uh, I mean, uh, sometimes people believe that a master has to be the one that knows everything, the one that ha had in the hands all the knowledge of the world, all the, yeah. all the knowledge of the topic. But uh, he was someone that really struggled for help his students as much as he can. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, he keeps saying to me that you have to go to China. You have to study English. You have to study Chinese. You have to learn philosophy. You know why? Because he never did that. He cannot speak uh, English. He cannot speak Chinese. And he never been in China. Interesting. And he, mm -hmm. Yeah. And every time he finds someone that he believes is good, he always let me know. He said, this guy in London is very good. This guy in France is very good. You yeah. have to go. If you have time, you have to go. So that is why I cannot forget him. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, 10 years ago. Uh, that is why uh, every year I organize a big event uh, to remember him because mm. I want to let all my students uh, put in their mind uh, this kind of person because he's a, he's a very great example for martial arts world. I love and, that. Uh, and that is why now I'm in China. That is why I spent so much time in, in Asia looking for masters doing research because he inspired me in some way. I love that. I love that so much. And um, I'm sure that, you know, he's, he feels really proud of, uh, of your journey so far, right? And uh, <laughs> the things that you're accomplishing with, uh, with um, your teaching. Um, I, you know, I first heard about you from um, Sifu Martin Brogard. I think you organized yeah. an event together, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a g great uh, martial artist, very skilled, a great friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, he invited me in his school for one seminar yes. because uh, he he asked me to share some of my experience in internal uh, mm -hmm. aspect of martial arts. So I went there. It was a nice event. So yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And I, I would love to dive deeper into uh, this aspect and if um, you'd like to share some of the most important aspects sure. that you feel um, would be helpful to um, to everyone uh, listening in. And before we do that, let me just ask you, how was your experience in China? Because uh, when I interviewed uh, Sifu Batalia... Yeah, he, another of my friends, yes. Yeah, I actually saw a photo of you guys uh, on Facebook. And he was saying that it's funny that... and it, like You know, you're an Italian. Sifu Batalia is also like Italian. Like, you're an Italian in China teaching the Chinese about Kung Fu. It's just like I, like myself as a Romanian, would come to Rome to teach people how to make pizza. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> how was that for you in the beginning? Um, honestly, it was not so hard because uh, uh, people are looking for uh, other people that are able to share things. So, I love that, yeah. And then if you, are, if you are really interested in things, you don't care if your face is Chinese, is uh, Western, is... Uh, Wherever. So yeah. the point is that uh, are you able to share information? Have you the heart to share what you know? Do you want to share what you know? Do you have actual skill? When you can prove that, people can feel that. So it's not a big issue, even though I'm I'm Western. For sure, if we think about some of the martial artists that are related to the past generation mm -hmm. and see one Western teaching here, uh, we can say that maybe the, some of them are not very happy about mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe that there is a sort of inversion no, on, in the planet, like uh, mm, uh, many of the Chinese people now are interested in and looking forward for the Western culture. Yes. And uh, it's, it's normal that uh, in, in Italy and in the West now it's developing such a uh, huge interest for the, the Asian culture. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's also normal at the same time that maybe there are also some good people that know many things about the Asian culture and maybe some of them now they are moving to China. Mm -hmm, so it's quite mm -hmm. normal. And then uh, about pizza, if you go to Rome and uh, you eat the pizza, you can uh, figure out very easily that 
most of the the pizza place, the the guy that don't do the pizza are Indian. Yeah, but the yeah, pizza, exactly. the pizza is delicious. The pizza is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I stand. Yes, I, I, I agree, you know, and I used to work in a pizza place myself because, guys, if you don't know, I lived in Rome for two years and um, I worked at, you know, I, I was, I was trying, that's where I opened a school for the first time. I was trying to teach uh, Wing Chun and um, uh, I had like some side jobs like uh, delivering pizza and it's exactly how Sifu uh, uh, Mauro is saying, like, yeah, the guys making the pizza are either in Indian or from Pakistan. Pakistan, the, yes, the yes. The pizza yes. is amazing, I, I swear. <laughs> right, right. It's yes. like, if you're passionate about what you're doing and you love to share it, it it's, yeah, it's 100% the thing that, the, that matters. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, did you always do internal martial arts or did you try some external martial arts as well? Uh, as I said, I have I had experience in different styles because uh, I studied for a long time uh, Hungar inside this school, the, the first association, and mm -hmm. also Thailand Chuan. And uh, um, I'm focusing now a lot in Pagua Zhang, is mm -hmm. one of my main style. And Pagua in some ways is related to the uh, other external style, like Luo Han Chuan, a kind of uh, Shaolin style. Mm -hmm. So. I can say that yes, in the past I also had experience in a, in a sterner styles. But uh, talking with the masters here in China, the old one, I don't know if you have uh, any chance to see some or uh, watch some of the interview I post online. And uh, in the past there was not a clear distinction between internal style and external style. Mm, interesting. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I think that nowadays there is a little bit of confusion between uh, internal styles and external styles and internal abilities and external abilities mm. because because styles are methods yes. so we are using we are we have we want to use styles to develop some specific abilities and skills so in the, we can say that in the set of different styles we can find different kind of abilities and maybe some of the abilities that we can reach are related to the internal abilities and others maybe are related to the external abilities. Mm -hmm. So the separation between internal and external styles is a quite modern one. So we are talking about maybe a little bit more than 100 years. But in the past, we were talking about internal alchemy and external alchemy, not internal styles and external styles because nobody cares about styles. Mm -hmm. People cares about, about results. If you give you one styles with a very crazy and nice name, yes. but then you figure out that these styles don't give you any results, you don't care. Mm. But if I give you one styles with a very stupid name, but they can give you a great result, you are happy, right? So it's like that. So now, <laughs> nowadays... <laughs> I love that, yeah. <laughs> so nowadays, uh, people are focusing on the idea like, I want to be the best Wing Chun practitioner. I want to be the best Tai Chi practitioner. Mm -hmm. From my point of view, it's like a, someone is saying like, I want to be a violin. I want to be a guitar. Why you want to be a guitar? I want to be a musician. I want to <laughs> I wanna play music. Why you want to be a guitar? The yeah. guitar is the instrument you're using to create music on your own. Mm -hmm. Not, you, you cannot be a guitar. Why you want to be a guitar? It's the same in styles. But there is also a historical reason because of that, because um, many of the styles that we have now uh, come from clans in China, in ancient mm -hmm. China. So we have to think about there are like villages and families, they have, they have a specific kind of system to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. So of course they cannot share things with others, because that one is their tool to protect themselves. Mm. But after, after many centuries, that doesn't make any sense to think about I cannot share that, I cannot show you that, because this is my secret, why? And uh, actually the funny thing is talking with so many masters around China and do interview and study with them, it's funny because in most of the cases you can figure out that what they believe that they, is their secret, actually the other one has the same. Yeah, exactly. But because, <laughs> yes, but, be, but because they never told each other, they think they, 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 they never, both have yes. the secret. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is my secret. You cannot share with anybody. Then you talk with the other one, they have exactly the same secret. <laughs> so that's, that's very, <laughs> very funny. But of course, uh, jokes apart, jokes apart, we can talk about internal abilities and external abilities, but mm -hmm. this is a, another topic. It's not about styles. Mm. And uh, 
And uh, how to say, sometimes people like to hand one, uh, one flag saying like, uh, this is my uh, internal style, is the original one, is a... Uh, but I, on my side, I only care about results. Mm. So I want to see if your method is replicable. That awesome. means that mm -hmm. if, if I'm good, like uh, Mauro, if I'm good, that doesn't mean anything. Because maybe I'm skilled, like naturally skilled. Yes. But if, but if my students slowly can replicate the same ability, that means that the method is right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So nowadays I can see around um, different people that are also quite skilled, but what about the students? So if you are the only one is skilled, there is something that maybe is not working in a method. Mm. So for me, the, the method and the procedure is the most important things. So uh, sometimes people believe that uh, I'm creating a new style right? because they see like decode, decode. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's not a new style. Are you, very, using... are you very analytical? Are you like a very analytical and organized person with, um, with the teachings? Or like more uh, in, in the yes. flow? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of teaching, yes. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I believe that if you want to share one experience, you have to make it uh, suitable for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I spend 30 years, I cannot ask my students to reach the same result in 30 years. Mm -hmm. I have to find a way to make my students reach me maybe in uh, five years or in 10 yes. years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the same time, I'm also improving myself. Yes. And then I will find a new way to let my students come to, to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, of course, at the same time, is, uh, martial arts is uh, related to internal experience like uh, inner experience. So I can uh, show the path, I can uh, sh uh, share the method mm -hmm. very clearly, but then you have to be, how to say, you have to spend time, you have to, you, you have to be devout in practicing every day, and also respect uh, every single step, because uh, especially in internal skills, mm -hmm. one skill is built on, on, the, on the other let's, one. Let's so talk. You can, Let's talk a bit about internal skills. What, you know, for people who don't really know what we're talking about, um, what are internal skills uh, for you? And uh, what are some of the results that people can expect by training their internal uh, aspects? Okay. Um, first of all, we have to think about that. As Western, we like to separate everything. We like to say, like this is internal, this is mm -hmm, external, mm -hmm. uh, yin, yang. And then if you open one book, even related to the, the Taoism theory, you can yes. find like they, they explain like yin and then they mention a lot of terms like yin is the female, is negative, is black, blah, blah, blah. And the yang, other things, right? Yes. But uh, this is not the way that Western uh, Asian people think, uh, think about, yes, yeah, mm. think about that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for them, yin yang concept is one, so they are together. Mm -hmm. So first of all, if we start to separate completely the inner ability and external ability, we are already we are already doing one mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as the principle of synchronicity, synchronicity, I don't know how to say yes. in English. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, synchronicity mm -hmm. that that uh, we can find in the Ching, we can try to shot shot one picture of the topic. So we can shoot one picture in this moment we can try to figure out what what is in what is young okay okay what mm -hmm. is internal what is external right but it's not going to be completely right mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if we shoot another picture in another moment our perception is going to change mm -hmm. but anyways uh around the martial field you can uh, find a many different definition of internal and then i said before all believe that what they believe is the only things that is internal. For example, I met one guy that is very skilled, especially in uh, uh, move the, the body using the, the breast, the briefing inside. Mm -hmm. And then he believed that that the only, was the only, is the only key of internal. And uh, he doesn't have any other, any other internal ability because he believed that he, that one is the mm -hmm. only one mm -hmm. and he's very skilled. Right. Then I met, then I met another guy that he be believed that internal abilities is related to the nervous system and in some way is related to the meditation because you can uh, learn how to alterate the state of the nervous system through the meditation. Right. So if you don't do meditation, you're not doing internal. So uh, to, to make it shorter, I believe that there are 
many different aspects related to internet. There is not only one. Mm. And then the combination of different, different aspects of internet generate other skills. Mm -hmm. For example, recently I heard a lot of people talking about the PANG ability. That is why I'm going to teach this seminar about PANG in, in Italy. And uh, which ability? The PANG, PANG, PANG painting is the one kind of energy described in the classics of Taiji Chuan. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with the term. I'm, I'm not sure uh, what it is. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So usually people uh, uh, describe this principle as uh, the power to expand the body. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the, actually the, the expansion of the body is one of the symptoms of the pang. But uh, this kind of uh, energy comes from the relaxation of the body, relaxation of the mind, and a right and a proper way of use, using the breath. We have some people listening in who are thinking, oh my God, I have some parts of my body that I'd really like to expand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's maybe people are all, all ears right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yes, but, but uh, in, traditional, in traditional martial arts, there are many aspects related to other aspects of the Asian culture, even in the uh, Indian culture in some way, because uh, as you can, you know, I guess, uh, Chinese martial arts is, is also related to the Indian culture because mm -hmm. most of the Qigong exercises come from the Indian tradition. Yes. And in Indian tradition, we find also the Tantra and Tantra in some ways are also related to some kind of internal training mm -hmm. that uh, is, pr is still present in some styles. Yes. But maybe mm -hmm. many, many, many people don't like what I just said because martial arts is in, the, in general very proud of your, their sexuality. <laughs> mm. no, I think people are still listening. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So um, you're teaching this ability to expand the body uh, uh, in your seminar in Italy this uh, this June. Yes. Mm. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. So yeah, sorry, I interrupted uh, what you were saying before. No, I mean, I mean that that is one of the the abilities related to the internal. Okay, mm. and actually, actually, it's not only about expand the body, <laughs> but it's about to, to find the emptiness inside the body. Mm. And to find the emptiness inside your body, you have to spend more time inside yourself instead of spending time outside. So that is why one of the training that you, you have to do if you are interested in internal aspects, you, you have to start doing uh, meditation exercises to reach the state of meditation. Mm -hmm. because. Uh, that's the most important thing. So people think that okay, doing meditation is when you are sitting on the chairs, thinking about things or visualizing things, but that actually is just one tool that we can use mm -hmm. to reach that kind of state. And then uh, this, when you're saying that kind of state, which state are you referring to? How how can somebody uh, identify and say, okay, this is close to the state that I'm looking for? How how can somebody know that they're on the right path? Okay, so if we think about the, the normal life, most of the people spend their time trying to decodify the information that they feel from the outside. Mm. For example, you come inside one room, you start feeling the temperature of the room, you start feeling how the light moves inside the room and the object around, the shape and the space mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you get information from the outside and you start decodifying that. Okay, and then this kind of decodification in your mind you can convert in one thought in your mind. So when I say like uh, reach one state of meditation means that actually your intention is not to try to decodify what you feel outside, mm. but try to decodify what you feel inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you, when you start this kind of inversion, your perception of the, of the outside is going to change. Mm -hmm. And then that is why the, the state of mind when you, you are saying that you are practicing internal studies is fundamental. So it's not only about, oh, okay, if I do Tai Chi, my hand has to be like this, or my palm has to be like that. It no, it's, strictly, it's strictly related to your, the state of your mind. Mm, I love that. I love that. So one method would be, uh, as you said, breathing techniques, meditation. Is there any other way where, and of course, forms, doing the forms probably a bit uh, slower. <laughs> Are there any other aspects in um, training your internal abilities to help your external abilities? or Okay, let's think in this way. Uh, 
most of the people are not able to have the perception of their own uh, bit rate. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually, if you can reach that, this kind of feeling is quite easy. Yes. So, after may maybe one week, if you spend a little bit of time, you can already feel the, 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 the heart is moving your side, mm -hmm. inside. But you can expand this kind of uh, feeling and sensation to the entire body. Yes. So, let, let's think in this way. For example, you are also a teacher, right? You teach uh, Winston and other things. So most of the people, when we are talking in terms of movement, they look themselves and they correct themselves from the outside. Mm -hmm. For example, they have one shoulder up. Mm -hmm. okay? You can see people that look in the mirror, the shoulder, and they say, ah, oh, this shoulder has to be down. Mm -hmm. And then they move the shoulder down. As the body is something that is not their own, it's something external. They look and then they correct because they cannot feel anything inside. Yes. So slowly, if you move your attention inside, you, you can feel deeply all the si single fiber of your body. And then for sure, in external terms, external terms can help you a lot. Because when you're going to strike one punch, you have the perception of all the fiber of your arm. Mm -hmm. When you wanna generate one contraction, the way your brain is going to send information is going to involve a, a, a huge amount of fiber. And then you can generate more speed, more power. And then even though your structure sometimes uh, is not uh, to say from the architecture point of view perfect. Mm -hmm. You can even hold force because you are using a lot of uh, small muscle and connection inside because you can feel that. I love that. So sometimes in my video, I also show some like, exaggerated movement. Okay, and then I have some people ask me, Ah, but Sifu, uh, do you really can do that in fighting? If someone attack you, you are gonna bend your your back like that. And I always say, of course, that one is not the best solution. But I'm just trying to improve my sure. skills and then trying to hold one force. Even though my structure is not right, it's not perfect, I can make the structure right and perfect mm -hmm. inside myself. So it's a way of training. So in this sense, this is just an easy example that in how internal abilities can help you for in the external aspect. I love that. I love that. Um, you know, and this is one aspect that we're focusing on a lot in, in my school, this idea of, you know what, listen to your body, listen to what you're feeling, get in touch with, um, you know, like your breath, your heartbeat, meditate. Um, and I, I tasted, and it's very really easy to have this, this state of quiet and peace while you're meditating. Something that I'm... I'm uh, learning right now and my students are also struggling with at the moment is how do I keep that state of um, balance of peace and uh, you know and uh, oneness when I have to pay my bills when I have things to worry about when I have my kids going crazy at me right how do I keep my, my state my power okay well, this is a very interesting question, huh? because, but we have to talk about one other aspect to answer the quest, this question, because we used to identify ourselves with uh, our name, right? Yes. I'm Mauro and whatever. And when we, we keep identifying ourselves with that, we are gonna, we're going to have a lot of problem, a lot of trouble, because mm -hmm. everything can hurt us. Yes. Okay, if someone says something bad about Mauro, if someone say do something bad to me or something like that, it can hurt me. Mm -hmm. But if I stop identifying myself with my body, so the perception of all the situations is going to change. So mm -hmm. actually the state of meditation is to to remind yourself constantly that actually you are something more than your name. Mm -hmm. You are something more than your, your physical perception. So when you, you start keeping have this, this kind of feeling, actually what, what you are going to have in your life, you know, your everyday life is just one chance to test your reflection in this reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can check how you, you can react in situation, but you don't worry about that because you know that anything can hurt you because the things that can hurt, the, the things that can do something, they can, they can only do something to the, to the external part of you, but not to the inner part of yourself. Mm. So in this sense, you can keep your state of mind uh, on uh, another, another state, another level. Usually in, uh, here in Asia, we, we divide the, the human being in three different parts. 
we have the we have the body we have the spirits and then we have the energetical form mm -hmm. okay so the spirit is we can say in the western terms like the ego so what mm -hmm. we identify ourselves in this reality mm -hmm. okay but the spirit is behind the ego so if when we start understanding that we are the spirit and we are not the ego we are not going to be affected by any problem in normal life mm -hmm. so that's the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love that yeah and uh and now if we are we want to talk in terms of how i can reach this kind of state yeah. and uh, once i've read one very nice uh, metaphor about that is related to the idea to be a painter so if you are a painter that every day like to paint the, the blue sky in, in his paint in paint and uh, every day he washes his brush mm -hmm. but the day before after again he paint uh, the, the sky the blue sky so when, if you keep doing that paint the sky and brush and, uh, and clean the brush and do that after a while you cannot clean the brush anymore the brush is going to be blue mm -hmm. so the process of uh, doing the exercise of meditation is the same i do meditation to reach one state and then i stop and over a sudden i come back to the normal state mm -hmm. but if i keep doing that i reach one point that i cannot brush my mind i, I cannot clean my mind anymore as the brush is going to be as the blue sky so my mind is always going to be connect that state. connected to that state. with the part that is important for our life yes mm. that analogy actually makes me think of something that greg braden was saying in um in his book um the divine matrix he was saying we're both the artist and the art so you're constantly um drawing your life moment by moment by moment you're choosing your life and um it's funny because the analogy that i give my students is like you know do you see yourself as as an individual inside a storm or do you see yourself as being part of this storm one with the storm and yeah i think it's just about like exactly like you pointed out the more you get into that state of meditation the more natural it is for you to keep it and and have it yeah thank you very much yeah yeah no, it's like that it's like that and uh, mm -hmm. and then you can find a, you can you can find a lot of uh, interesting methods and exercise in martial arts related to this kind of process mm -hmm. but because uh, still a lot of people care about the appearance and the shape mm -hmm. they cannot feel that if you think about how Lu, people are looking mostly are looking of outside mm -hmm. how the the, the postures to be Yes. But the posture come from come from what you feel inside. If the posture come from the outside, means that your posture is fake, because you are just trying to copy something that you're seeing in another guy. Interesting. So, so it's interesting because it's like in modern science. We have like info. We have information. We have energy, and we have the material. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. The information are the principle. All the styles talk about principles. Okay, when you you can put one principle inside the energy, so we can say the energy is the 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 effort we can put for in training, and at the same time the energy is the energy of our body. You put the, this principle inside our body, actually the shape come out mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. But if you invert the process, maybe you cannot reach. The energy you cannot guide the energy in the right way because you don't have the principle that are moving the energy inside yourself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that is why i decided also to to change at one point my way of teaching because in the past i, ju I just uh, was following that normal method like okay you teach the taolu and then you spray explain rules and everything so now i prefer to organize very intensive training with people yes with a, with small co with small numbers of people because I have to let them understand how to work and play with the principle. Mm -hmm. Because when you, they understand that, they can influence their energy and then the shape come out. Of course, I can guide them, telling them, okay, the Tauru is like that, so the first movement uh, should be like this. But I'm, I don't need anymore to correct them how to put the shoulder, how to put the back. Can you, um, just to have a better idea or a clearer idea, can you give us an, an example of teaching principle before teaching form? Okay, so if we wanna, if you wanna work, for example, uh, on movement, mm -hmm. okay, 
if you the base of the movement is learn how to don't move the body so if you're not able to stand if you're not able to sit if you're not able to move the, your body inside how you can move your body in once in the space mm -hmm. okay so first of all for example i work a lot with uh the jang Zhuang exercises maybe this is quite common recently but uh, most of the styles in the past use jang Zhuang. jang Zhuang is a kind of training that these students have to stand and keep one position. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different kind of, uh, yeah, opposition. The, the three and the other more complicated uh, depends on the style, anyways. Mm -hmm. And uh, starting from that, you can start feeling the alignment inside your body, mm. and then you start feeling that you are extremely stiff. Mm. And then only if you have the perception of the how stiff you are, you can start relax your body, because mm -hmm. you cannot release tension that you don't feel. Mm -hmm. And what, what's the tension in your, your body? Actually, the tension in your body is one movement that you are doing that is locked. So your mus muscles are contracting because actually there is one information that your brain is sending there is a kind of movement that lock your muscle in your body. So first of all, you have to release completely your, all your tension in your body. So the first step, you want to learn how to move. Stop moving, moving your body in a not efficient way. So that's, that's the first thing. Awesome. Awesome. And when, and when people start getting the feeling of the tension that they have in the body, they, they can accept to do a lot of, we can say, boring of ex exercises that people never accept to do mm -hmm. because they don't feel anything. Yeah. So the first thing is always give to people experience of what you are saying. So if I tell you like, okay, you, are, you have a lot of tense, tension in the body, people usually reply, no, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Even though you can see people that have the shoulder here, their body here, like that. And then you tell them, well, you see your shoulder a little bit up. You say, no, no, they are not. Until they, they cannot feel that the shoulder are up, they cannot change. So the process is always through the experience. Every single thing you want to let, you want to share to the students, you have to let them feel. Mm -hmm. And then they can learn, they can accept the process and they can accept the method. Yes, um, and one of the things that people, I think, should uh, get a chance to feel is, um, you know, the thing that always stands out for people who are doing martial arts when uh, they see uh, one of your videos is the explosiveness, right? People see, uh, oh my god, this guy is fast, it's like, and he looks very strong. Um, when did that actually start to tie together for you? Like, when did that become natural and how did you make it natural for you? Okay, so when I start stopping, trying to be fast, actually I become very fast. Oh, it's funny how this because works, doesn't it? It's like always like you want something in your life, you, want, you work for it so hard, and then when you're just about to give up and say, you know what, forget it. I don't want this anymore. Yeah. That's when it happens. Be because when you, your mind, you keep the idea that you want something, that no, means that you don't have. Mm -hmm. So if you believe that you don't have, you cannot have. So what mm -hmm. do you have to think about that all these kind of ability are already inside yourself. So my body is not changed too much. It's not changing too much. All the skills I have, I have inside my body from when I was born. Because my body works like this. Yes, I can train, I can develop other things, but actually it's just an uh, optimization of what I am. Yes. But if you want to be very, very fast, first of all, you have to accept that you have to learn how to be very slow. Very slow. Because when you are very slow, you can connect your body perfectly. And then you can, it's like playing. I, I like playing music a lot. I play guitar, classical guitar. Nice. And... Uh, when you, you go to one concert and you see maybe one, one guy play one piece of Bach, you can see that they play so many notes at the same time, so fast, okay? And a lot of people look at them and say, wow, this guy is so fast, how can he be so fast? And then they go home, they take the guitar and try to play very fast. But they don't know how many hours that guy that was performing there studied so, so slow the movement. Because you have to find a way to don't waste any Energy. time, any space. Yeah. Okay. So in martial arts, it's the same. This is one part. We can say that this is one uh, technical part. So how to train your body and at the same time a little bit your mind. But at the same time, 
through the, the proper method of, uh, how to say, developmental ability, you can get the feeling of the speed. Because the reason why we cannot generate power in our arm is also because we are not able to involve 100% of the fiber of our muscle. Mm -hmm. But why? Be because we just don't use to that. Mm -hmm. And the re reason why we are not very fast is also because we don't use to that. Because we don't have perception of time, we don't have right perception of space, if we don't have the right perception of what kind of information we have to send to our muscle. So when you, when you are able to send the right information through the relaxation, you can generate a lot of speed. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Um, and I, I notice myself repeating how much I love this interview. I don't usually say that. You know, People listening in, <laughs> they're probably tired of me saying how much I love this interview. I don't know. There's something about talking um, about these topics that gets me really, really excited and uh, opens me up. Um, yeah, I, I have actually, I don't have any more, uh, questions. I'm very happy with, uh, our discussion so far. Um, actually, nice. actually, do you, do you think that, you know, because you mentioned all of the ability, all of the skill, like, for example, a lot of people who are listening in, uh, they would love to have, um, maybe more success in their careers or maybe, um, have better relationships. And what I've noticed, for example, with um, with my relationships, is that when I was very keen, we're, we're going back to the uh, initial subject um, uh, that we discussed with, with the previous subject. When I was very focused on having the kind of relationships that I wanted, you know, it was just getting slipping through my fingers every single time, right? But when I let go, I said, you know what, I don't need this um, anymore. It just came. Do you think that? you can have a certain result without this process of working towards it and and have it slipping through your fingers without this this focus of you know what i want this and going a period without getting the result and then saying you know i don't want it anymore and allowing it to come do you feel it's possible just to say i want this and then opening yourself up towards um that result Okay, I don't want to put this interview in a too much too philosophical way, but the, the okay. question you ask me, so yeah, the question you ask me, are like that. So the problem is that people people are not living in the present. Yes. So, f for example, in my case, I never thought like, okay, one day I'm gonna leave to China. One day I'm gonna I'm gonna teach martial arts to Chinese people. I never thought like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, because uh, what I'm trying to do every day is just to 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 be the best best version of myself every single day, mm -hmm. and uh, in this way, naturally, I can reach the things that people now from the outside they can see. But uh, I give you one example. Sometimes people ask me, "Ah, okay, well, my master, uh, you have a very great experience in martial arts, so you are going to practice martial arts for all your life." And then I usually reply, "No, maybe not." And then people look at me like, what, what? And I say, yes, because now I want to do that because I feel that. Maybe yes. tomorrow I like to do ice cream. I'm going to do ice cream. So <laughs> maybe I'm going to open one shop. But yes. what I, I'm trying to do every day, really, is to try to invest and spend my energy in the best way. And then uh, all the things that I can uh, reach in my life, it's just a consequence of that. Mm -hmm. So because of the passion that I have for martial arts, I spend a lot of hours every day training myself and studying and doing research and uh, training and training again, again, again. But it's not because someone told me that, ah, you have to train a lot because then you can reach a lot of skill and then you can be a good master. No, mm -hmm. it, is, it is just because I like to do that. Yes. It's because I like the experience of that. So from my point of view, it's not about doing a lot of plans, but it's about are you express yourself in the best way every single day? Because if you do that, maybe you realize that what you believe that you want is not what you want. But if we keep in our mind, I want to be like a superhero, rock star, like that, maybe one day you can reach that, that state, but that is not what you want. Hmm. That is not what is for you. It's just one image, it's just one projection of, that you put in your mind. 
But if every day you try to be the best version of yourself, one day you are going to be very happy doing something that maybe you never expect. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree with I'm, that. I'm sorry, but you ask me this kind of thing. No, so it's a great, this way. <laughs> it's a great, great uh, answer. You know, it's it's the personal development through martial arts um, podcast. So um, they're very closely related. You know, um, y when you think about it, when you synthesize it, it's like like you were mentioning before. You know, the two uh, masters, one from the the one village and one from the other village. They both share the same same secret, so we're we're all talking about the yeah. same thing in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, many times people that that know me quite well, they say that. But Mauro, why you do martial arts? Because martial arts is quite violent. So sounds something that is not for you. Why mm -hmm. you are doing that? And then uh, in other cases, people say, Ah, master, you are very skilled. You are very good in fighting. And and then I always reply to them that this is just a collateral effect. Because if you work on yourself, if you develop your mind, if you change your perception of time and space, and then you get new feelings of your body, you already got a lot of skills that for sure, if you are in a situation of you need to protect yourself, you have more chance than the other one. Because mm -hmm. you know how your body works deeply. Yes. Okay? So, if we think in this way, just it's just a collateral effect. Yes, I'm fast, strong, rooted, but it's not because I'm looking for that. Mm -hmm. It's not about I want to be strong so I can punch yes. someone. No, I can. I can. I want to be strong because maybe on the street I can help someone. Maybe I can. I can help one one guy to all these bags after he buys stuff in the market. <laughs> so, okay. And uh, yes, if someone attack me, I can punch him to protect my family. <laughs> but. It yeah. has a it's collateral just, effect. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny that, you know, the, the better you become, the less this, these things happen. They just, you know. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Of course. Awesome. Um, Sifu Mauro, where can people get in touch with you and tell us a bit about your following event in, um, in Italy, your up and coming event? Um, yes, we have one uh, Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like um, Mad, Mad Decode, Mad Decode, mm -hmm. and you can find a lot of information there. So, yes, Mad, I like Mad, you know, because <laughs> my, my, my parents give me this uh, extraordinary name, you know, Mauro yeah. Antonio D'Angelo. Yeah. And uh, I like Mad because uh, mad, mad people, crazy people are the ones that don't accept to live in a normal way, mm. don't accept the society. So other people point at you, uh, you are mad, you are crazy, you are a weirdo guy. Okay. So thank you very so much. So in this sense, I, li I, li I like this outcome. <laughs> like, <laughs> so they can find uh, the Facebook uh, page, uh, Mad Decode, or the, the website, maddecode.org. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there are all the information out, uh, about the events. And uh, there is a, a, a group of people that uh, I can never stop thank them that because they are helping me a lot, that uh, reply people and uh, organize mm -hmm. events mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. to help me. So if they write and you can, they can follow me, uh, using the Facebook or the website if they want. Awesome. I will post the link in the description, guys, so you can easily find uh, the website. And um, yeah. Uh, Sifu Mauro, what is one question that you would like to ask everyone listening in? Uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so if the what they are doing is respecting the promise that Give to them. If what they're doing is respecting the promise that they give to, gave to themselves, is that the question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But which promise? Because I'm sure that people make a lot of promises to themselves. <laughs> yes. No. What I mean is like uh, talking about martial arts, for example. They expect that martial arts can give them like a superpower. They can fight, or they do tai chi because. Uh, they can give them a good health or things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my question is that the method that they are using are really helping them or not? Yes. And uh, if they understand why, yes or why not? Mm, nice. Awesome. Guys, I'm looking forward to your answers. Post them in the comment section. Would love to, uh, to hear them. Um, until then, 
uh, be sure to connect with uh, Sifu Mauro. Check out his website, and uh, if you get a chance or you'd like to meet him in person, check out his uh, events uh, page and do so. Sifu Mauro, thank you. Thank you so much for your time and your wisdom, and I'm very happy we got a chance to sit down uh, and talk. Yeah, thank you to give me the possibility to share some some of my weird Italian stories. <laughs> it's not it's not weird at all. I have some <laughs> Italian stories of my own as well, but we're gonna we're gonna share those in private. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Guys. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys, I'll see you next time. Until then, share this podcast with, um, with your Kung Fu brothers or your, um, you know, your martial arts uh, enthusiastic uh, friends. And be sure to use this information and share the information or the wisdom that you found um, in this conversation with, with other people. That would honor this, um, this interview very, very much. Thank you for, so much for tuning in and see you next time.